we sit alone. I know someday we must go. Oh, oh, oh. I'm a biomedical engineer, uh, originally from Montreal. What brought me here to Nova Scotia are two of my passions, uh, medical device development and surfing. When I first joined the Thoris' team uh, about four years ago, uh, my mandate was to develop and design and help commercialize a neat little technology that's called the airwave oscillometry system, which is a neat little portable device that enables a doctor to assess the lung function of their patient in an easy manner. Uh, we are now on the verge of commercializing this product. Tremoflow is a medical device that is dedicated to measure lung function in asthmatic and patient afflicted, for example, by chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases. Um, spirometry is a technology that is widely used to assess lung function, uh, restrictions and obstructions. Uh, but it is a maneuver that is very difficult to perform by, for example, children, elderly and sick patients. The beauty of our technology, the airway oscillometry system, is that all the patient needs to do is breathe normally and naturally through the device for a relatively short period of time and then a measurement is conducted and the doctor is able to assess the level of obstruction of a patient's lungs. Stay with me oh. Let's just breathe. I started surfing about seven years ago and one day I found this job on the web and uh, in Nova Scotia and I was like, wow, this is an opportunity. This is my chance to merge two of my passions, medical devices and surfing. So I moved here and, uh, and I love it. At St. Mary's University, I work in the area of fundamental synthetic inorganic chemistry. Fundamental meaning I look at how atoms and molecules interact with one another. Synthetic meaning I build molecules, I build them up like putting pieces of a puzzle together. Inorganic chemistry meaning that I use all the elements of the periodic table. Chemistry is really exciting to me. As a kid I spent a lot of time building puzzles, I, I obviously did a bit of math, um, but I was also liked enjoying building with Lego, working on my motorcycle, my, my truck when I was a teenager, and just the critical thinking involved in, uh, for example, changing a motor in a truck. There's a, it's not just a simple thing. Um, but now I can apply this to my work now. I like to discover new things. My PhD work at the University of Windsor involved discovering new and efficient ways of making plastics, such as the plastics in a grocery bag. The latter half of my work involved incorporating phosphorus into those plastics to make new uh, fire retardant construction materials and fire retardant plastics for use in the automobile industry. I show my students that chemistry isn't just about equations and drawing out molecules, it's about exciting new discoveries. Chemistry is an essential part of our everyday lives. Without it, we wouldn't have plastics in all of our automobiles, our cars. We wouldn't have our smartphones, our laptops. The uh, chemistry is part of making these materials. Pharmaceuticals are a major part. If without chemistry, we wouldn't have medications to make people better. If we look at uh, organic chemistry and, and inorganic chemistry, we're, de we're constantly developing new molecules that can be applied to preparation of cheaper materials, more effective materials. It's important for us to think about the environment, so quite often we're looking for new methods to make uh, processes cleaner, so then there's less uh, carcinogens, less waste that could be put in the environment. Perfectionism is associated both with resilience and with risk. In my research program, we look at the darker side of perfectionism, seeing how perfectionism places people at risk for problems like depression and bulimia. There's nothing wrong with being a perfectionist as long as everything's perfect. Of course, things are seldom perfect, so we often see that perfectionists have tremendous difficulties in the face of perceived setbacks and failures. Good enough is never good enough when you're a perfectionist and perfectionists are often bothered by a sense of deficiency and because of that they're often vulnerable for problems like depression and disordered eating. There's a tremendous amount we still need to know about perfectionism. We need to do rigorous basic research and then apply it to real world problems that perfectionists face. I have a wonderful career that provides me with an opportunity to do research, to direct and to help people and to teach and mentor students. Canada is a centre for excellence when it comes to perfectionism research and we like to think Nova Scotia is among the leading provinces when it comes to conducting that research.
When you go to the Discovery Center, you see children playing with science. As an adult, I'm fortunate in that my job still allows me to play with science every day.